Hi everybody, it's the beginning of a new vlog. <laughs> Hi boo! <laughs> San Bonani, Sanbonani. Anyway, hi everybody. We are at the launch for the new Hyundai Creta. Your sister, me, me. Not your ultimate babe. Your sister, me, me, me. I got a kid, guys. Guys, <laughs> I'm a true influencer. Hmm? Influenza. I'm influencing. So we got here early because Robert were punctual. We know or when you need to get somewhere at a certain time. You, must you gotta get, get somewhere. We're in Pretoria at eight o'clock in the morning. Eight o'clock in the Take morning. We're in Pretoria. I mean, there's a bad who feel like I eat to sex. It's not like near but Facts. you feel like it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know how hard it was to wake up early in the so morning. So hard. Into my face. Lucy say I had a face, neck and face. Ah, no, I stuff it. For drive a color, Uncle Leo. And we all happen. We both Aye. happen to wear black because black is our color. Yeah, that's you true. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Mm -hmm. And then after popping. that, I want us to go get breakfast at Pablo. Yes, and then we need to go pick up my future husband's car. <laughs> Did you also tell them that you're pregnant? <laughs> Guys, we'll talk about that later, okay? That is what Hey, we'll talk about that later. Don't get excited. Don't get excited yet. It's a secret between us and you guys, okay? I'm so shit to them. Even if it isn't. Even if it isn't. We like that sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, yeah, we're waiting. We're going to go in. We've got work to do. Um, We're both here to actually do some work. Okay, some influential work, but also have a good time. And then after that, go have lunch somewhere. And then be right. Okay, otherwise. Right, so we're here, the craters are behind me, and we're about to go on a little test drive. Looking so forward to it. They are so pretty, like, sweetie. I might just buy myself a credit chair. <laughs> but they're so nice. My sister's behind me. There she is. There she is. Doing the things. It's my lady's driving, so it's fine. Yo! And yes, yes, she is. If you're asking, yes, she is. <laughs> Performance fuel. Anyway, hey, my no is car no man. Something doesn't feel right about this. Nelaria, bro. Something doesn't feel right. Now back on the road. No, we're back on the actual road. On the real road. Mm. Like, and she, mm. she seems so confident. Can't she she's she's like, nah, turn around. Can't like, can't like, can't like, so we turn and thinking I must we, know what she's talking about. We, you know, sometimes you must trust in your instinct. Must trust your instinct. Okay, bye. <laughs> Darlings, hi lovies. Um, so it's a few days later from the uh Hyundai essay. 
event. That event happened on Friday and we had to leave that event early because I needed to pick up my partner's car from somewhere and uh, um, then I pretty much spent the weekend there with, with him, with his ugly self. Um, then I came back home yesterday in the morning. Yesterday was Monday, today is Tuesday. I uh, came back home yesterday in the morning, took a shower and went to the office. And uh, today I didn't go into work because tomorrow I am leaving for Cape Town and I'm leaving with my sister. So this is not what you're going to see this week in this vlog. You're going to see it in the next week because I'm going to start a completely different vlog. So tomorrow I'm leaving with my sister for Cape Town. Uh, the reason why is because after she came back from Portugal slash Spain, um, it's funny that I say this now because there was a tweet that I was reading yesterday from someone who was coming off and going off at my sister talking about how my sister was lying about uh, her trip to Portugal when she was actually in Cape Town. I wasn't aware that Afro Nation was happening in Cape Town as well because trust you me, I would have been there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, it's half past one. This is my first meal of the day. My father is also going to be in Cape Town as well. Uh, he's going to be there for business work, other things. Uh, but my sister and I are really just going there to enjoy ourselves. I told my sister when she came back that we should go to Cape Town and she said, okay, it's cool. Let's go. So it just happened to coincide with the time that, uh, my dad is also going to be in Cape Town. So that's cool. Wow. Really? So the sun is choosing to be very strong. So I let down the blind a little bit anyway. So yes, that's what's going to be happening. By the time you watch this vlog, we will be back from Cape Town. So, uh, it, it's fine. The vlog is probably going to go up on Saturday. I'm hoping <laughs> or Sunday. Um, that will give me enough time because we're leaving for Cape Town tomorrow and we'll be back on Friday. Maybe even Saturday. We might extend our trip for another day, but we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. So, <sighs> Yeah, so ish. it's been really, really busy, tough. Last week I was trying to get myself acclimated with school stuff because I am now doing distance learning and I'm studying and all of that. Ow, more books. <laughs> Forget about that. But uh, now I'm a scholar. I'm a scholar. I'm going to school, you know, so I've, I... I'm studying and I'm writing notes and I'm distance learning and all of that. So trying to juggle that and work and content creation, content creation being dropping three videos a week is a lot. So last week I kind of cracked a little bit because I was just like, okay, I don't have time. I need to look at my schoolwork for a little bit, set my dates, schedule everything, put them on my phone, blah, 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 all that stuff because it is distance learning. So Everything is pretty much all on you. There's no one chasing you and saying, oh, you hand in your assignment or do your tests or whatever, whatever. So, yeah. Um, so there's not much really to share with school because I'm literally just started and uh, I'm currently working on my first assignment, which I want to have done by next week. So I, there's not much to share. I'm, I'm doing life coaching. You guys know this. And so that does it, does it, uh, with regards to that. Um, so I remember, I think I spoke to you guys a while ago about a girl who was, um, I think I spoke to you guys about mean comments and some girl months ago, uh, sent me a DM on my Instagram and said, you know, um, I'm just coming to you, you know, just as someone who follows you, as somebody who's been blah, blah, blah for you, about you, all of that. It's my sister. Hey, sister. Hey, sister, quick one. And then I'll, yeah, I'll WhatsApp you. you. Okay, bye. Bye. 
It's my sister and I talking content creation stuff. So anyway, uh, I remember speaking to you guys about mean comments and having received mean comments and this and this. And some girl was like, oh, you know, coming to you, you know, as one of your biggest supporters and biggest members of the JK fam and this and this. And I really just wanted to tell you that, oh, you know, your content is like, it's kind of getting boring now. Hang on a sec. I really wanted to tell you that your content is kind of getting boring now. You should be able to do something different, whatever, whatever. And I responded quite nicely and kindly to her. And I said, um, there really wasn't any need for that. If you find my content boring, that's fine. You don't have to watch and you can unsubscribe and it's fine. Um, uh, because there's a difference between giving someone constructive criticism and actually just downright insulting someone. Uh, your version of boring with whoever content creators that you watch might not be the same as my version of boring. Um, so anyway, the very same girl <laughs> blew me up on my Instagram. I didn't block her after that first time. I was just like, I told her off nicely, politely, professionally, and um, I let it go. She was kind enough, I'm using kind very sarcastically at this point, she was kind enough to uh, DM me again and say, I'm loving to see that your numbers are growing and this and this and blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, but still, ish, I, I still have quite a bit to say about your content. But yeah, I know you're going to be upset, so you can block me if you want. Um, but I was hoping maybe we could talk about it, whatever, whatever. And I said to her, you're right, I am going to block you. And I did. So, just be cognizant, guys. You know, if you watch our channels and you find that our content is slightly different now and it's not what you signed up for initially when you started following my channel. That's fine. That's normal. That's something that happens. But if you find that the content is different now, it's so easy to just click that unsubscribe button where you do not have to see another. You don't have to see another from that content creator. But it really takes nothing away from you to just keep quiet instead of having to be mean, downright condescending, because the reality is, as content creators, we put a lot of work into the content that you see each and every week. Sometimes I don't want to put out content. Sometimes I'm tired. Sometimes I need to focus on school. Sometimes I'm at work and I'm coming back late and I'm tired. I really just don't want to be looking at editing a video and putting in this and working on that and this and that and the other. But we do that even in over and above, um, you know, everything else that we've got going on so that you guys can consume us as your content creators and consume our content uh, each week. So please just, if, if you're in a place where you're thinking, I don't like Atlas content much anymore and whatever, I can respect that. I'm quite mature enough to exp respect the fact that it's just not your cup of tea anymore. And I hear that chat. Um, and feel free to unsubscribe if that's what you want to do. But to be honest, we can't as content creators take disrespect lying down. We're not going to do that. If somebody's going to be disrespectful to someone who pushes myself, who pushes out so much content in a week over and above everything else that I have to do and commit myself to, I'm not going to take it lying down. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be petty because I'm still professional. Yes. I'm not going to be petty, but you will hear a thing or two from me, you know? So that's, that's just pretty much what also put me in a really big funk last week. And it's funny because last week, and this is why I am here to talk to you guys today. Okay. You know how they say you make your plans and God laughs. Or how they say, in God's time. Or how they say, yada, yada, yada. Now, I know I've mentioned a lot on my channel, and I'm not going to get emotional with this because I refuse to, right? I know I've mentioned a lot on my channel before that I'm thinking of quitting YouTube, and I'm thinking of just letting it go, man, for a little bit, you know. I'll keep the channel there, but let me not upload for maybe like six months, you know what I'm saying? Let me get my mind right, my body right, let me sort myself out. 
um, because as much as I do YouTube and as much as I put out all the amount of content that I put out each and every single week, it would be nice to have that reciprocation from brands or from, you know, just to get sponsorships because I don't know if you guys think that we make a ton or a killing on YouTube because we don't. Um, the only thing that helps us is if we get sponsorships. And when we get sponsorships, that is what just elevates us a little bit more. That is what gives us that encouragement that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working and somebody is seeing my work and seeing the effects of my work and all of that. Even though I love to share what I share with you guys each and every single day or every single week or whatever, I love to share all of that and I'm not going to stop. But it would be nice to be monetarily remunerated as well through sponsorships and things like that because then it makes our job worth it, easier. We can put more into it because then there's the money to put more into it, that kind of thing. So it's, it's just based on so many things. And last week, when I tell you I pray, okay, and I pray a lot, and then the last maybe two weeks or so, I haven't really prayed, not the way that I normally do, right? When I go to bed, I normally get on my knees and I pray. But in the last two weeks odd, I haven't been. I've been, um, in truth and in honesty, I've just been going to bed, you know, I'll close my eyes, I'll say a quick, excuse me, I'll say a quick Our Father, I'll say whatever. But I wasn't praying the way I normally do. Open up the Bible, see the scripture for the day, talk to God, actually converse and communicate with God. Because when it came to a lot of things that I don't share on this platform, I really don't. I've been under immense stress. And if you are on my membership space, you kind of understand why. So it was going away, going to the facility, being diagnosed with clinical depression, this, that, and the other, work, lack thereof, that kind of thing. So I was really, really stressed about a lot of things. And my faith wavered quite a bit. And, um, you know, I, 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 I hate to say it, but I got tired of praying. I got tired of it. I just felt like I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm making difficult decisions. I'm going through a lot mentally and emotionally. My mental health is short and all of that. I just don't want to do this anymore. You know what I'm saying? If, if it's not for me, then it's not for me. And I remember earlier that week, I was having a conversation with one of my friends where I was just like, you know, uh, Mbali, I, I, I was just even thinking of stopping and quitting and all of that. And she was like, nah, bro, like if you do that, then where do you leave people like me who are introverts and enjoy watching your content and this and that and the other? And we spoke about it. Little did I know that week was the beginning of a week where I would get more sponsorship work than I have ever. <laughs> I mean, ever. And for me, that was nuts okay i haven't normally i would get sponsorship work in drips and drabs like right here then maybe six months quiet and maybe three months quiet and whatever and these are things that i don't really talk about on my channel because i'm fortunate enough that i i have a job i find other ways of making money so it it doesn't financially impact me as much when I just get a YouTube salary at the end of the month as opposed to sponsorships and whatever. But it did get exhausting at some point because I remember so many videos ago, I would say to you guys, please like the video. Let's get the video to over a thousand likes. The reason why we say that, we're not, we're not sucking words out of our bums when we say that because YouTube recommends us more. And I know that my, on, on, on other people's, you know, so you'll be watching someone else and then you'll see a video of mine pop up on the side. YouTube recommends us more when you hit a certain number of likes and, and views and all of that. Um, so that's why we ask you to do that. And I can really hope and pray that you're listening to me right now because as much as I feel so grateful and last week when I got this work with Hyundai 
and Hyundai, Hyundai, Hyundai. When I got this work with Hyundai and I got um, some other potential works, I'm still talking to the uh, client and all of that with the other things because I don't want to also do work that is not reflective of what my channel is about. So um, there's potential work that I'm negotiating because I also know what I'm worth and I'm not going to, you know... Um, work for peanuts because like I said this is a lot of work right so last week was the week where I don't know man I feel like God was like okay let me give you a break let me give you a break it's been hard for you for the last couple of months let me give you something to smile about and uh, I smiled at a lot of emails that came in last week I think so I want to thank you guys that's why this is happening right now and I'm sharing this with you guys whether the other four pan out, I mean, I've done one already, and there's three that I am still in talks with. Whether they pan out or not, something woke up in me that day, or the last week, you know, feeling so invigorated and feeling like I'm being seen, slowly but surely. Something woke up in me that day, and I am so grateful to you guys for pushing me and saying don't give up keep going i'm grateful to all you guys who repost and reshare and like the videos and whatever and you actually listen to me when i say please repost it even if it's on instagram so i can take it and repost it on my platform and all of that whether it's on instagram or youtube or whatever please i know literally by name the people that do that a lot because there's not that many, but the ones who are there do it. And I really do appreciate that. And I do appreciate all the people who have joined my membership space because that's another space where I was so uncertain of, you know, how it's going to look and, and who's going to join and then leave the membership space and all of that. And is it really worth it to be producing all this content, this extra content? And since I've started, it's only grown. So it is worth it. And I really do appreciate the support. Um, and to the people who can't get the membership space, dependent on your topic, topographical area or where in which country you're in, I'm really sorry about that. I don't know why. Um, because my membership space is 40 bucks a month. And I know for some people, it's not. It, that's a lot of money. Um, but to those who have chosen to support me from the beginning and didn't unsubscribe or un whatever, I really do appreciate it so, so much. Um, God is, God is like, chillax, wait, 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 just a little bit, wait. So I'm waiting and I'm waiting on God and I'm feeling rather Hopeful, faithful, optimistic. And I'm looking forward to see what he's got planned for me next. You know what I'm saying? Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday are my upload days. Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. And it's always between 10 and 12 in the morning. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I'm going to share. I'm going to go upstairs and pack. I don't need to show you any of that because really... I showed you my whole packing regimen routine thing um, when I was going to Lions Valley. Um, but I do want to mention, because I get asked about these sneakers quite a lot. These sneakers are the ones that you guys see a lot in my vlogs or in pictures, I suppose, on my Instagram page. Or someone I know saw them when I was packing my bag for Lions Valley, these are the same. It's the same sneaker, just different brand. It, different brands. It's the same brand, same sneaker, just different colors. This is the On The Cloud sneakers. This is a Swiss brand, and they are sold in Hyde Park. You can get them online as well. They are the most comfortable sneaker I own. I took them out this morning and I washed them and they took about an hour to dry because the material is so light and these are what I want to wear when I'm in Cape Town with my black tracksuit and with my white tracksuit and a coat on top um, for those two, three days that I'm in Cape Town. So 
that's it. Uh, I had to mention this because I keep getting the DMs like, oh, Katla, I was watching this video of yours and you showed this sneaker. Hey, this, this. These are the on the cloud sneakers. I absolutely love them. They're by far the most comfortable shoes I own. Um, I bought books because what's new? Should we close out this vlog with a book? I literally just finished reading. Oops. It's, it's, I think it's on my... I'll put a picture of it here. I literally just finished reading um, this morning at around six in the morning. I finished reading You and Me on Vacation by Emily Henry. I have got more of Emily Henry's books. I haven't read these, uh, but I finished reading You and Me on Vacation and I thought it was okay. It wasn't great. I know it's very polarizing. There's a lot of people who love, love this book. And then there's people who really just don't like it. Uh, but I'm sitting somewhere in the middle. Um, because, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a friends to lovers kind of trope. It follows Alex and Poppy. And how each and every single year they meet in college. They become really great friends. And after that, each and every single year, they promise each other that they go on one trip together in the summertime. And... Um, something happens a few years into this you know setup of theirs they go to they go on a trip to croatia something happens it changes the dynamic of their relationship for forever um and yeah they don't speak for a really long time until one day poppy calls up alex and says can we do one final trip together in the hopes of rekindling their friendship or reigniting their friendship um so friends to lovers Sure, I'm not really crazy on that trope, but hey, uh, friends to lovers, that's great. And then my whole thing is it could have been much shorter than it is. I think it's around 370 pages. They really could have, Emily Henry really could have gotten, gotten away with shaving off 50 pages. It's set in different time spans and where you understand the, 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 the you know, flow and ebb of their relationship, of their friendship and all of that. And But I just can't get on board with how are you friends for 12 years? And in 12 years, there was not even one opportunity for one of you to just crack and break and say, listen, man, ma listen, man, I love you, man. For me, it just didn't, it just seemed so far-fetched. Um, and there was just extra, it was just going round and round and round. And I was just like, nah, is it an enjoyable read? Yes. Is it something that I'd pick up again? I don't think so. Uh, but would I keep it on my shelves? Sure. It's a great book with a great cover. It's enjoyable. I suppose romance readers will love it. I'm not typically a romance reader myself, but hey. Um, and then what I picked up, let me tell you, at the rate that I buy books, Please also note that my partner is very much highly involved in me buying books because books are expensive. I'm not going to sit here and buy books every single week or ever. Sometimes he's just like, and you know, he always says to me, Hore, the most dangerous place I can take you is a mall because I know we're going to walk out with a book or two or three. <laughs> so the three that I bought, I think last, not last week, the week before are these ones. And I'm very, very very excited more especially for this one i am not going to give you the synopsis very excited for this one i'm not going to give you the synopsis but this is from sylvia moreno garcia who wrote i can't show you it's right off the screens right here uh mexican gothic and i really loved it so this one is called the beautiful ones pick this up uh this is the sanatorium by sarah pierce and it's about a hotel in the snowy alps i think in the swiss alps right and uh something happens uh at the hotel and then the the detective um, a female detective comes to, you know, investigate what happens, what goes down at the hotel, whatever. But it gave me the Overlook Hotel vibes. It gave me very Stephen King vibes, especially considering the fact that uh, last weekend my partner and I watched The Shining. Again, we're horror people. We love it. We watched it and this just, just, it literally gave me the Overlook Hotel vibes. Okay? So that's why I picked it up. And then another book I picked up, I'm trying to get into reading sci-fi or fantasy, trying. I'm not going to say that it's going to be my favorite genre of books to read, but I've been talking to Charity from Booked on Charity, 
I love her videos. I love her demeanor. I love how she's chilled. She's laid back. I relate to her quite a lot more. Um, um, and I watch quite a few South African booktubers, but I relate to her quite a bit more because she's a bit demure like me. She's not very uh, and loud and all of that. So I've been speaking to Charity for about two weeks now. And I told Charity that I saw Ray Bearer on Charity's um, channel and she was reading this. And Books and Lala has spoken about it. Many other YouTubers that I watch internationally as well have spoken about it. And it is a uh, fantasy novel. And I think it is young adult. And Charity was telling me that, you know, Charity was telling me maybe it's best to start with young adult fantasy so that you can see how it, you know, because the adult fantasies, not only are they huge, but there's a lot more going on in them and uh, maybe just start with young adults so that you can see or maybe gauge is fantasy something you're looking to read so okay pick that up and uh, what she suggested I start with is Tomi Adeyemi's Children of Blood and Bone, which I've heard of and I've tried to pick up multiple times and something would just say, nah, don't pick it up. And are you loving this, the, 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 the sprayed edges, the red? Are you loving it? Because I know I am. And this one also has yellow sprayed edges. This is the Gilded Ones, which is what I'm going to read next. This is my next novel. I'm going to take this with me on the plane tomorrow and read it. And uh, yeah. So really, really excited. She suggested these, and uh, so I'm gonna read them, okay? I'm fast running out of space on here, and it's stressing me out, but we'll talk about that later. That's my sister. But yeah, so I'm gonna go. So I'm gonna go, and um, yeah. I'll see you in the next vlog. I know this one is pretty short and there's not much going on in this vlog, but it'd be like that sometimes. The next one will be exciting. I will make it a point to record and film as much as I can when we're in Cape Town. And uh, yeah, that, that will be it. That will be it from me. I'm going to go. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I've got some schoolwork to do and some packing to do a little bit later. And yeah, I'm going to go. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.